everyone. My name is John. We're going to talk about uh, API design today, uh, how an awesome API can attract friends, make you rich, and change the world. Uh, real quick background. Um, I am with a uh, startup called Zencoder. We do video and audio transcoding in the cloud. So we're basically an API to high performance video and audio transcoding. So that's part of why I'm interested in APIs. Um, uh, for this talk, uh, uh, I hope you're interested in APIs too. I gave this talk at a single track conference once, and uh, uh, this topic might be kind of dry for some people, but I think it's actually really, really exciting. And uh, you're a self-selecting audience, so hopefully you do too. Um, I'm only gonna spend a couple minutes on the basics of APIs, what an API is, what basic terminology is, and then I wanna get into what I think is more interesting, which is how to make an API good, and what, what do APIs actually enable uh, in the world that, that you can't do without them. Um, so I'm going to, uh, Try to keep this first part to about two minutes. I'm actually going actually to time myself and only try to bore you for two minutes uh, before moving on to what is maybe more interesting. So, uh, so the basics uh, here. Um, an API is an application programming interface. It's an interface between two bits of code, two applications. Uh, it's kind of like a user interface. Uh, interestingly, they're both interfaces. Only one is an interface to people for people and one is an interface for programs. Um, sometimes an API is, uh, uh, so sometimes something like a library or an SDK is considered to be an a API. It's basically uh, uh, an API between one bit of functionality and the code that you write. So it's within one you know, memory space, within one bit of code. So you might have an API to SSH functionality through NetSSH. Um, but what I'm gonna talk about today is a different kind of API, and that is things like web services. These are interfaces between two separate applications over some level of, of distance. Um, web services have been around for a little while. Early on, there was SOAP, the uh, ironically named Simple Object Access Protocol. Uh, SOAP is not really, uh, SOAP so probably still exists in the enterprise, but even in the enterprise, more and more people are moving to REST, which is uh, a much simpler way to, to structure an API. REST is basically the realization that HTTP is an API protocol, it's an API language. Uh, the web itself is an API between a browser and a web server, two bits of software talking to each other via an API. And this API called HTTP REST can be used for our own uh, web services. Um, so with something like this, you can uh, uh, read information, get records, you can write information, you can post records. Uh, last thing, um, uh, when you are sending information via web services, you need a structure for that data. So two common ones are XML and uh, JSON. And that was one minute and 50 seconds. So uh, uh, done with the basics. Any, any, any questions on the basics of APIs? That, that, that's, that's pretty simple for this audience, I assume. Um, so uh, uh, I mentioned earlier that uh, uh, why I'm interested in APIs is that that's what my company does. We are a company where really all we do, all we have is an API. Um, uh, you don't use our service for anything other than uh, uh, the API. We, we have a, a web interface, uh, but the web interface is not really that interesting. Uh, you, you don't sign up for, um, uh, uh, for our, our, our service to get access to this. This is just a management console on top of, of what we do. What we do is fundamentally an API. So uh, um, a li little bit of history here. Um, uh, this is actually a really bad history of, of web services. There, there are things that come before this, but I think there's sort of an interesting progression in the growth of web services over the last few years. Um, uh, remember uh, Flickr, back, back in sort of the, when people talked about Web 2.0, um, there, there were services like Flickr and uh, Twitter who had an API. It was sort of a secondary side effect of what they did. It wasn't the core of what they did. Um, but some people think that Flickr succeeded because it had an API. It wasn't primarily an API, but that actually enabled it to be the success that it was. Um, the, the sort of second uh, stage of this history uh, is infrastructure as an API. And this is where things get really interesting. Um, so Amazon Web Services is uh, a platform that gives you an API to, like, uh, to, to Linux. Uh, it gives you an API to gigabytes. That's pretty interesting. Um, the third stage in, the, in this history is uh, technologies or maybe applications uh, as, as APIs. So Twilio is an API to telephony. Um, uh, Simple Geo is an API to uh, uh, ge geolocation. Um, and th there's a lot of companies doing this right now, taking things that previously were done in other ways and turning them into um, uh, API-driven services. 
the, the, last, the last stage in this, this history is, uh, uh, I, I didn't know what to call this, so I called it science fiction as an API. Um, there, there are things coming up that are, are uh, uh, really interesting when you think about them. So has anyone ever used PyCloud? What, what is PyCloud an API to you? It's an API to Python. It's kind of interesting. Uh, how about Crowdflower and Mechanical Turk? What, what are those APIs to you? People. So, again, science fiction. You, you, you can now be driven by an API if you choose to, um, which is kind of interesting. So, uh, um, if you, if, uh, so, so following this progression, more and more APIs are coming online. APIs are doing more and more interesting things. So how do you actually make an API that is good? Um, uh, I, I, I don't want to make this a talk about my company, um, so I'm going to uh, uh, blank out any names here. Uh, but but, but uh, 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 we actually get tweets periodically, um, things like this. Seriously, Redacted is how all APIs should be built. Uh, or hacking up an integration with Redacted and Recurly. Uh, I really love good APIs. They make my life as a developer suck so much less. Does anyone resonate with that sentiment? Bad APIs are like the most miserable thing to work with as a developer. Um, uh, the, the can't get much more painful uh, uh, than a bad API. So what does it take to make a good API? Um, and really, how, how do you turn your API actually into uh, a competitive advantage? Um, a good API is not just something to have, it's actually something that can uh, 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 really help out your application. So how do you design a good API? I have about a dozen things I want to go over, and I want to talk through this too. I, I, uh, uh, I, I'm, I'm, um, this is not a comprehensive list. Um, uh, but here's some of my ideas and my, my experience uh, with APIs. Uh, so first, um, use REST conventions. Um, this, is, this is pretty non-controversial, I, I imagine. Um, uh, REST is simple and REST is really commonly used. If you're building an API, you're probably, people using your API probably are gonna work with you know, 15, 20, 30 different APIs over the course of a few years. Uh, and the more conventional you can make it, the better, the less people have to learn. Um, REST is simple, I'm uh, not even gonna go over this. Um, uh, so, uh, second, um, make use of HTTP codes. Uh, HTTP has a lot more response codes than just uh, uh, 200, 404. Um, here's some of the ones that we use. Um, uh, and these actually give you a little bit more meaning, meaning than just 200 or 404 or 500. Um, so, created, accepted. Uh, um, there's some interesting ones like unauthorized, payment required. Uh, conflict, I'm a teapot, which we actually don't use, but it's in the spec, which is interesting. Um, and there's lots more. Um, uh, so kind of pick maybe the subset that fit with your, uh, the, the, the problem that you're solving. Um, third, uh, any, 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 any thoughts on response codes? Any, anyone seen an interesting use of response codes or them used well or poorly? Um, so third, um, version your API. Um, and this is something that should be one of the first things you do uh, with an API, because it's much harder to add versioning after the fact than it is to bake it in from the beginning. Um, the reason to version an API is really, really simple. Uh, let's say this is your API today. Um, uh, you get a record and you get back a color and a velocity. Uh, uh, what if you decide that you want to go beyond uh, um, colors as, as uh, um, simple words like that, and you want to go to hex values for colors. And you just built an application expecting to get green back instead of this hex value, your application is all of a sudden gonna break. Um, uh, so what do you do? You can add versioning as a way of namespacing, let's say, a resource. Uh, you go from the v1 API to the v2 API, and uh, people can choose which one they want. Um, there's a few ways to do this. Uh, here's three different ways to kind of signal versioning in an API. Um, who, who, who's, who's dealt with this problem before, and, and what did you decide to do? Say it again. Sure, sure. So using URLs is pretty easy within Rails routing. What are other, other considerations?
So there's actually a good, a good point there, which is uh, whenever possible, don't require a version change. Uh, it's, it's, it's a pain to keep multiple versions in sync. You can, with, with a, a lot of things that look like you might have to change an API structure, you can oftentimes find a way to avoid uh, making a breaking change or a backwards incompatible change. But still, you need, to you, you need to reserve the ability to do that occasionally if you absolutely need to. Any other considerations for this kind of thing? Sure, yeah, uh, yeah ca caching can be much easier with uh, the second method there. Any rest purists here? What, 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 do, you, what do you think? So, rest <laughs> <laughs> if you, if <laughs> one more. So, which one do you prefer? Except that. Yeah. So you, you you can find plenty of discussions on this topic online. Uh, or keep keep going. Go ahead. Sure, sure. Yeah, you, 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 there, there, people, there, there are debates online, but at the end of the day, you get to kind of the same place. Uh, I'd say the other consideration is aesthetic. Which one, which one maybe looks better or is easier to understand? Um, uh, but they'll work. Um, Next, um, smart validations. Um, so if, if someone is, uh, let's say, sending a request like this, they're, they're, they're posting a record to your system, uh, and they provide a valid, an API key of not a real key. So assume for a second that's not a real key. What do you do? Well, you can do this. You can do a 500 internal server error. Um, uh, you know, it was a bad key, so you failed, right? Um, but that, that, that's not a very good response. Um, this is a little better, 401 unauthorized. Um, but you can do better than this, too. Um, what about this? Actually provide maybe an errors array back. Uh, uh, errors, API key not found. OK, so now people can really hone in on what's going on. Taking this a step further, um, uh, this errors array is, is basically the same thing that we use when we build forms in Rails, right? We have, we have an array that maybe validates, uh, tell, tells you, ideally tells you exactly what's wrong with the field. There's no reason you can't do that with an API uh, request uh, validation either. Um, but even here, I think, I think this could be improved too. Um, why not say API key not found? Please log into example.com slash account slash API to retrieve your API key. So tell them what's wrong, why it's wrong, and how to fix it. Give, given the complexity of working with APIs, the developer who finds this is really gonna appreciate that you took the extra time to add that little, that little help, uh, help text there. Uh, no, another example, uh, wh what's wrong with this request? Yeah, so, so uh, there's no comma in the JSON there. Who, who's, who's spent like more than like minutes uh, trying to troubleshoot something like this in the past? Tr troubleshoot something like this in the past, uh, uh, malformed JSON. So you could return a 400 bad request. This is a bad request. Uh, but why not do this? Why not embed like a simple JSON parser in your API. So if they send in bad JSON or bad XML, you can actually get, tell them structurally, here's what's wrong. It's not that hard to do. Any thoughts on validations? Well, you may, you may address this soon, but I've just seen situations where people have used HTTP response codes um, that make sense, such as a redirect, uh, in certain instances for their API rather than returning a 500 error or something like that. Uh, say more, they, they've... Yeah, I mean, I can't think of the specific situation right now, but where they've used HTTP response codes that 
seem to have a fairly decent analogous uh, meaning to what their API is doing. Uh, so maybe they'll use redirect, uh, a redirect response code instead of a 500 error in certain cases. Or yeah, I think I think you absolutely should. So so for this one, maybe 400 is the right one uh, for a malform request. Uh, you, you can get into trouble if you use something that's totally, if it makes semantic sense, but it totally breaks convention. But, but generally, yeah, I, I, think, I think you absolutely should. A question for the REST purist. If that key was not found, is that a 500 type error or like a 404 not found? What's not found, the URI or the resource? So, yeah. I mean, this was a post, right? So the, the correct answer would be to do what he did because it's a malformed request. It's not like an error on the server side. So I'm sorry, I was going back to the previous example of a bad key with correctly formed request. I'm sorry. If there's a if there's a bad key, so if the key doesn't exist, then I would probably end up returning uh, the same thing, like a 403 and saying it's a bad request. Okay. But, you know. Thank you. Um, so, uh, next uh, uh, API suggestion. Um, strongly consider using both JSON and XML. Um, and there's a simple reason for this. Uh, this guy here probably doesn't know what JSON is, or maybe thinks it would be a security, a security vulnerability, um, whereas this guy won't use XML on principle. <laughs> we, we, we actually initially designed our API only around JSON, uh, and we realized that .NET developers don't know how to use JSON. Like, JSON is not built into .NET. Uh, and JSON and, and .NET developers don't like to use third-party plugins, I, I think. It, it, correct me if I'm wrong here. Um, so, so we had to act, add XML to, to make them happy. Um, the good news is that it's really easy to do this. Uh, uh, Rails, for example, if you set your headers properly, uh, will automatically parse JSON. Uh, um, uh, and, and, and similarly, uh, this is all Rails 2.3, I apologize about that. Uh, but similarly, it's really easy to return either JSON or XML um, uh, on both sides of, of an API request. Without a lot of work, you can support both. Um, here, here's an API design question for, for you all. Uh, 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 so the, 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 the hardest thing that we found here is uh, um, uh, JSON has arrays as a, a simple uh, native type, whereas XML uh, doesn't exactly. Um, uh, any, any, any thoughts on the right XML to represent like an array? I think Rails.2XML uh, uh, gives you like uh, 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 a node plural and then singular nodes underneath with a type of array. Uh, I don't know. Especially use a list type. Any, any, any other gotchas converting between XML and JSON that anyone's had trouble with? So, I mean, if you limit yourself to JSON, it's much easier to add XML as a type. Um, if you limit yourself to a structure that can be represented in JSON, yes. whereas XML has sure. a lot more flexibility and can always be converted to JSON. Sure. So, if you start with XML, you make, make, make decisions that are not compatible with simple JSON. Yep, absolutely. Um, next. Um, document your API. Uh, no one likes to write documentation, but APIs absolutely need documentation. Um, uh, uh, if anyone's ever tried to work with an API without documentation or incorrect documentation, uh, it's, it's uh, impossible. Um, one thing that we've done, and, and there, there's some API tools that, that I want to talk about uh, uh, also uh, but, uh, that, that can help with this. One thing that we did is we wrote a simple like DSL uh, for a documentation. Um, uh, it basically uh, encapsulates an API setting uh, uh, with various things. And we can turn this into like rich documentation. Uh, and we can reuse this stuff all over the place. So we can give like code examples that are automatically generated just from a little bit of simple information. Um, and it's not that hard to do. Uh, and it's really, really appreciated by users of an API. The one thing that we're not doing here, I think the next step on, on, on this would be uh, uh, actually connecting the API documentation to validation and implementation of, of, of the API itself. So the API spec and documentation are, are in sync across the board. Um, and has anyone ever done that with, with an API? How, how did you guys do it?
Um, next tip, this is really simple, but uh, provide libraries. So provide a simple Ruby wrapper for your API. Even if it's a clean, clear API, uh, a simple Ruby wrapper, Python wrapper, PHP, Java, et cetera, uh, it's not that hard to build, um, and it can uh, make integration that much easier. Um, support your API. Uh, and there's a, there's a simple reason for that, and that's that APIs are kind of scary. An API represents uh, someone else's responsibility, so, so something that you don't have control that's injected into your application. Um, it's extremely powerful, but it's also, it can be frightening. And, and, and if you're using someone's API and they don't respond to email and they, 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 they don't help you out, uh, it's, it's, not, it's not a stable position or a stable relationship. Um, uh, next, uh, make it fast. Uh, an API should never slow down an application. So there's a few things you can do here. Uh, uh, Git requests can often be cached using um, this, this, the same things that, so that can speed up a web site can easily speed up a, a, a web service application. Um, just as a principle, one of the things that we try to do is not let one person's API requests affect someone else. So if one person's flooding you with API requests, that should not uh, slow down things for other people. Okay, so yeah, th th there's two sides to making something fast. In, in, in the case where you have an asynchronous processing API, one side is accepting the request in the first place or handling the request, and the other is doing the work. I think both are absolutely true. Um, uh, I'd say this, I'd be referring more to accepting the request in the first place. Um, uh, although on the other side, I mean, so we deal with this problem, um, uh, and we have, you know, our, our queuing algorithm doesn't let one person's load um, uh, slow down other people's uh, systems. So, so if, if you send you know, a thousand jobs, uh, it's not gonna block everyone else from doing things. Um, but, yeah. Along that sort of thing, that's kind of an API where all the processes are just like, you know, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, and it's fine to send something out. And then instead of uh, having to wait, the uh, insurance thread can send back a, Uh, that, that's an interesting way of doing <laughs> handling a long-running process using a, a, a redirect to the resource when it when it shows up then it's done. I see it right. Yeah, so, so I think, I think um, the, 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 the size of files that we deal with and the length of time it takes to process, ultimately you, you, you can make that totally orthogonal to the performance of the API. So we, we do something kind of like uh, 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 that. We, we don't actually do a redirect to the resource uh, when it's finished, but when, so, so our, our, our processing takes anywhere from a few seconds to a few hours. Uh, we will, as soon as we get an API request, we will send a response that says, uh, record created, so job created or video created, uh, uh, will give a pointer to the file where it will appear when it's done, and a job ID that you can reference, so you can pull our API, uh, check the job ID, you can pull the location of the file, see if it's there, um, and we do a callback. So we can, uh, after processing, we can send a callback to uh, a URL that says job finished. Um, so dealing with big files um, is, uh, Interesting, uh, uh, but, but 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 it doesn't it doesn't affect uh, this. It, does, does that make sense? Yeah. Um, so kind of a similar concept to this is uh, consider uh, rate limiting. Um, 
who knows what this uh, is? Uh, this is basically a denial of service attack uh, uh, that someone could easily accidentally do. Uh, 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 just loop through hitting your API over and over and over and over and over, and depending on how fast you respond, well, uh, and de de depending on how fast you respond or, how, uh, or, or the conditions under which this happens, this can be really bad. Um, so rate limiting is a simple way to uh, uh, um, not let someone make the same request too frequently or the same, you know, one user make too many requests too frequently. Um, log requests. Uh, uh, we, um, uh, um, it's, it's, it's really simple to, uh, to keep a record of every API request that comes into a system. And that can be really useful information when you're trying to in set up integration or when you're trying to troubleshoot why something's going wrong. Um, so we only keep this around for about 24 hours, uh, but someone can come in and say and look at every API request that they've sent. Uh, and if one doesn't work, they can go in and get information of what was the request body that was sent and what was the response that was sent. Um, and it makes it, uh, it, 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 it helps with uh, uh, digging into problems. Um, we have a similar tool. Uh, um, it's basically an API request builder. Um, our API is a uh, kind of a write heavy API. We have about 100 settings in, in the system. Um, so we built this tool where uh, you can choose the settings from a, a user interface uh, and it'll actually populate what the JSON is that, 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 uh, um, that, that, that creates that. So you can just copy and paste the JSON there and uh, 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 plug it in your application and that's your API integration. So I, I, th I think the, the um, uh, the, the, the point is there, there, there's a lot of tools that you can build for users apart from just sort of documentation, apart from at, uh, at the user level and not the API level that, that can make APIs uh, much more interesting to work with uh, and, and faster. Um, so that, that, that's about a dozen, a dozen ideas for, for API design. Uh, two questions, what, what, other, um, what other thoughts do you all have for what makes a good API? Uh, and two, th th there's a number of tools that are coming up, um, uh, libraries that, that help uh, uh, with APIs. H has anyone successfully used one or found one that's been helpful? I have one idea which is actually pretty much what the current line is, which is make your API documentation the only right where you would go to to get the API. Like, and, and hmm. we all hate SOAP, but that is actually one thing that SOAP can do. If you go to the SOAP URL, it will usually have some type of documentation. That's interesting. So, accepts HTML. Yeah. Um, a lot of purists really emphasize that you're, a lot of the API developers are really focused on the API itself. It's really the API that you can use to build your API. Yeah. And you can't really build your API So, so would the would the git URL show the structure of the post and put uh, uh, requests as well? Yeah. Or, or would you actually? All in the actual HTML because that's part of the response. So you'd be able to say like, you know, blah, 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 and put all your documentation. It would show all the different actions you can do. Yeah. Cool. That's a good idea. I try to treat API changes like database migrations in the sense that I try to only make these backwards compatible, only add, never delete, if at all possible. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's a good principle. Although it's so easy to migrate uh, in, in Rails and uh, uh, no, just <laughs> Have you ever run into issues with um, any of your customers having problems with methods other than get? Uh, what's uh, ha having problems understanding a put, for example? That's a good question. Um, are, are, are there some frameworks that don't play well with non get and post? I've run into customers that have problems with post. With the posts, yeah. <laughs> wow. we, we we've not it, seen that. It wasn't the default. Right. So I had to dig into their language to figure out. I ran into patch method <laughs> required by the Salesforce API to update the records. Was patch. Yeah. Pa a patch is a verb. Yeah. yeah. Patch is an HTTP verb. Back then, you don't have heard about it. Interesting. Patch, patch was added relatively recently. The GitHub API used it to create a patch, and there are more than four verbs.
So should we design our API to accept more than one bird from the same action? Um, that does the same thing, so yeah. kind of a, a, an alias to a, to a name. Right. I've seen I've people mix, mix put right. posts I do it all the time. Right. It would be a kind interface, but you just got to be careful with that. This yeah. thing was called ID6. We tried this already. Right. <laughs> <laughs> if you're too liberal about everything, then you never, yeah, like, it destroys any sense of semantics. So it's a balancing act of all and individuals, individual right? People I don't think there's any general advice. Like, you, sometimes you got to do it. The HTML spec does not allow you to put anything with get a post into an HTML form. So Rails has to do all the finagling with this undersigned method, and that's like a balance between like the standard and what we're trying to accomplish. So you always have to be playing that juggling game. It's incredibly specific. I don't think there's any like broad right answer for all cases. Yep. It's so definitely we, valid. We've, we've never had uh, critical. We, we've never had critical trouble with put or delete. I'd say those four at least are safe um, for an API for for a web service API. Others use your judgment. Um, Rest seems like a, a language where everybody always knows about it, everybody understands it, but it's used, everybody uses the same thing. Is there any point in history where we had, where there was something similar and they solved it or they, or they moved it, but everybody in the entire thing, it, it, it seems like there's a lot of um, miscommunication and missing pieces with Rest. They're there somewhere, but a lot of people don't know those pieces, and yet we use it for communication all the time. I mean, there is something we can look back to. Any ideas to that question? And then sometimes with like HTML5, standards are not even centrally made efficiently, so they, yeah. they become ad hoc standards. That that that. Uh, uh, yeah. Um, what, what about tools? Uh, uh, someone mentioned Grape. Has anyone used the Grape library before? What what, what are your, what's your experience with it? So, Grape. Uh, Any other tools that people have found helpful? Uh, so are you using any tools for twittering and uh, date limiting? Uh, not any tools. It's, 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 it's frankly a little ad hoc right now. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Has, has anyone used Apogee? There's, there, there's a number of services and startups too that are, that, are, that are being built around this concept. So it's an interesting, interesting space to watch. Um, okay, let's. Uh, we, we can uh, talk more at the end. Let, let's uh, let's get uh, to the um, final section here. I, I uh, the, the the title of this talk um, uh, uh, made uh, um, uh, said that this talk would help you make friends, uh, get rich, and change the world. So uh, uh, before you accuse me of uh, overpromising, I, I, I want to try to justify that. Um, uh, first, um, how can an API help you make friends? Um, so here's a tweet, uh, uh, Redacted is so awesome that I'd like to offer their developers free hugs. Uh, so this, this is someone that uh, uh, had never met um, uh, Redacted and offered uh, physical affection um, uh, based on their experience with the API. Um, and I think there's a reason for this. Uh, and it's that when you're dealing with, so if A, when you're dealing with developers, and B, especially when you're dealing with something like an API, awesomeness is noticed. 
Um, there, 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 there's, a, there's probably some like fancy uh, economics uh, term for this phenomenon that I'm gonna try to describe. I have no idea what it is, so I'm gonna pretend that it's called asymmetrical value curve. Um, so uh, 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 it, it, imagine this concept. So, so as, as quality increases, the value to the person who experiences that quality uh, in this curve increases linearly. Um, there, there's other phenomena that kind of follow this kind of pattern where uh, um, really, really high quality is not that much more important than okay quality. And there's some things that follow this phenomenon where until you get to the very, very best, uh, it doesn't really make that much of a difference. Um, so a few examples. Um, bus driving, I would say, follows this curve. Uh, ju just imagine for a second like the best of all possible bus drivers. Um, not like a bus driver who fights crime, just, just in their capacity uh, uh, as a bus driver. How much better is that than the median bus driver? Um, whereas the worst of all possible bus drivers is significantly worse uh, than the median. <laughs> Um, other things follow the opposite pattern. Um, I would say sports follows this pattern. Michael Jordan is not just a little bit better than the best basketball player at the YMCA. He's a million times better, or whatever it is, in, in, in terms of value. Um, uh, I would say art follows the same pattern. So you know, the, 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 uh, your, your friend who's the best at art is probably not nearly as good as, um, the, as, as uh, you know, uh, Michelangelo. Um, API design, I think, follows this kind of a curve. Uh, and actually, I think a lot of design in general does too, user design, product design. Um, but, but just, just incremental improvements uh, from good to great, from great to excellent, et cetera, uh, make, make a really, really big difference. Um, and that's, that's how you can uh, uh, make friends. So, so one more, one more uh, uh, um, email. Uh, 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 we, yeah, we, we got this out of the blue one day. Um, I know the following statement is going to sound dramatic, but it's the truth. Um, redacted seriously uplift, uplifted my entire day. The API is really well designed and has documentation not only for what each value, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so when I started digging into redacted, I felt like I was witnessing a double rainbow. Uh, then when I found the API builder, it went beyond a double rainbow to a level I can only imagine is equal to witnessing a unicorn, unicorn rainbow. <laughs> so that, that, that's, that's a lot of enthusiasm over an API. If you really want to know who redacted is. <laughs> uh, uh, it, it's confidential, so. Um, second, uh, an uh, awesome API can help you uh, get rich. Um, has, has anyone heard this phrase, software is eating the world? Um, uh, Mark Andreessen um, uh, has uh, wrote an article called this recently. Um, uh, he's the creator of uh, Mosaic, uh, Netscape, uh, uh, Firefox, or Mozilla, um, uh, et cetera, B big guy in software. Uh, and basically the idea is that we're, we're at this sort of early stage of software taking over more and more um, parts of uh, the structure of, of the world. So th things that previously had nothing to do with so software whatsoever are being replaced by software in some ways. Um, so Airbnb is software that replaces hotels. Um, Zipcar is software that replaces car ownership. Um, and and, and his, his idea, uh, and, and he's now a venture capitalist and manages you know, a billion dollars of of money. His idea is that, that this is uh, an accelerating trend and that software is going to keep eating more and more of the world. And there's huge opportunities uh, for people to take software uh, and put it in place of something that previously was not uh, uh, done by software. Uh, there's some study um, uh, uh, that says that there's going to be $80 billion in new spending in cloud computing over the next, I guess now the next three years. It's a lot of money. Um, and there's a lot of companies that are, are doing this kind of thing right now. So if you're looking for something to do, if you're looking uh, uh, to get rich or just to uh, build a product, build a company, consider making an API to something. Um, if you're looking for ideas, uh, uh, here's a few, uh, an API to Ruby. So PyCloud is a pretty cool idea. Um, be interesting to see that done with Ruby. Um, what about an API, uh, PyCloud? Um, so PyCloud uh, is an API to Python processing. So you can basically take a bit of Python code and run just that, 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 that normal Python code distributedly uh, in the cloud. Um, what about an API to the government? Um, who, who, who likes interfacing with the government? Uh, who likes going to the DMV and like filling out forms? Uh, uh, wh 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 why not build an API to like every IRS form or every government form that ever has existed? Or, or an API to, to uh, those kind of things. It would require a different HTTP status code for bureaucracy. Yes, that's right. <laughs> 
time out. <laughs> Uh, or another idea, what about an API to manufacturing? Um, so Amazon EC2 is an API to uh, like Linux servers or Windows servers. What about an API to like a thousand uh, 3D printers? Or an API to CNC routers? Or an API to laser cutters? It's still a little too early. I did this as a startup. And it's still too early. But it's awesome. And it's a great idea. And, and at, at some point, someone's going to figure this out. Like and it's going to be amazing. Years, it'll be yep. totally super sweet. Will you be a car? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, yes? I was going to say there's an interesting sociological slash postmodern argument to be made about software eating the world, which requires that the space in which it's going to be consumed, the items are considered fungible and interchangeable. So the zip car works only so far as the purchaser has no consciousness about the semiotic value of a BMW versus a Cooper <laughs> Mini. Although, yeah. Thing. Internet thoughts on that? That's a philosophy degree to work, which is right yeah. there. <laughs> 15 years to bust that out. So. Well, I, I, um, <laughs> Carl. I just say some people don't like talking to computers. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll, take, I'll take a stab at it and just say that, um, like, I think that perhaps you're there, that you may not have had a sophisticated response or, had, or delved into that a, a lot, but I think that there's no reason why Zipcar, for example, couldn't make that distinction, couldn't uh, care more about those things. Uh, I don't think, I think that's orthogonal to the API or to the fact that software eating the world. And actually, you, you can get a BMW on Zipcar. It's like two bucks an hour more than yeah. your, your Ford or whatever. Yeah, you could rent a Lamborghini and park it right, on the right, right. street. Right. So, so really, the difference, the, really, the, the fungibility would be one BMW to another. So it doesn't have to be my BMW, it could be any BMW. And all this stuff does have some degree of like, uh, 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 commoditization is kind of a side effect of, of this kind of thing. Not, not, not that every car becomes the same, but that you know, a, a car provided by Zipcar and a car provided by someone else, or this Zipcar car and that, that Zipcar car, theoretically, shouldn't be, you shouldn't have to worry about which one. Yeah, I mean, are. ultimately, software could model the real world. And it does, and, it may, and perhaps it will someday. You know, I mean, like, there's no reason why. Sure. So uh, um, last claim was that APIs, awesome APIs, can help you uh, change the world. So let me try to justify that. Um, uh, remember the dot-com bubble? Um, companies raised you know, millions and millions of dollars uh, uh, without having revenue or a product or an idea. Um, and, and most of that was a bubble. But there was actually some fundamental, fundamental reason for that. And that's that back in 1998, it was really expensive to run internet software. It was really expensive to start a software company. You had to pay Larry Ellison a lot of money, and you had to pay Sun a lot of money. Uh, so Mark Andreessen, in, in this article, says in 2000, the cost of a customer running a basic internet application was approximately $150,000 a month. Running the same application today on Amazon's cloud costs about $1,500 a month. That's a 100 to 1 uh, 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 price decrease. What caused this phenomenon? Uh, so so for, for, for this revolution, it was Linux, and it was Richard Stallman. Um, uh, today, you can run free software that is 
not only better than the most expensive software was 10 years ago, it's better than commercial software that you pay for today. Uh, and that, 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 that's a huge transformation in the world of software. It basically empowers developers, small teams, smart people to do interesting things. Previously, you had to go to these guys, the Harvard MBAs, and ask them for money if you wanted to do something. Uh, they, they got rich and became VCs, and they were the gatekeeper to being able to do interesting things. That's not true anymore. Now the fu model for funding is $20,000 from Paul Graham and a chance to sit and hack on something for three months. And, that, and you, you can build amazing things with just that. Or you don't raise any money at all. Uh, and, and you build an a, a impressive company with a small uh, group of people. Th this is the phenomenon that let uh, um, Mark Zuckerberg and Justin Timberlake change the world uh, um, uh, and build a billion dollar company uh, in a, a dorm room. So if um, Richard Stallman was the uh, uh, revolutionary of the last 10 years, what's the revolution of the next 10 years? I'd say it's Amazon Web Services. I think this does a very similar thing that, uh, uh, to the world that open source software did. Um, previously, uh, 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 you, you, if, if you wanted 1,000 CPU cores, you had to like, set up a big data center and pay millions of dollars or whatever it would be. Now you can get 1,000 CPU cores for a day for $204. If you want 50 phone numbers, you can get 50 phone numbers for $50 a month. Uh, and that, and that, that's a pretty amazing revolution that, that, that is just at the beginning. Uh, uh, more, and more, uh, more, more and more technology and, and, and power and functionality is going to be given to uh, small groups of people, small teams, uh, uh, to, to be much more productive thanks to this. And I'd say this is the revolution of the next 10 years. So uh, uh, takes power away from these guys and gives it to small teams. Uh, it also means that the next big uh, innovation is less likely to come from Steve Ballmer and Microsoft, and it's more likely to come from this guy. <laughs> so thank you.